Hi everybody, it's Miss Amy, and I'm here back with you to read Chapter 4 of The Indian in the Cupboard by Lynn Reed Banks. Remember, I don't own the rights to this book, but I'm glad I get to read it with you. So yesterday when we left Chapter 3, Omri had taken uh, Little Bear and the new horse outside to explore. So today's chapter is called the great outdoors so we're going to get to ex find out what little bear and the horse all got into and how it all went remember omri was afraid that the horse and little bear would run off so let's see what happened the great outdoors both horse and man seemed to sniff the air <sighs> tasting its freshness and testing it for danger at the same time. The horse was still making circles with his nose. Then Little Bear sprung on his back. The horse startled, reared slightly, but this time Little Bear clung onto his long mane, that long hair on the top of the horse. The horse's front teeth had no sooner touched the path than he was galloping. Omri leaped to his feet and gave chase. The horse's speed was remarkable, but Omri found that by running along the lawn beside the path, he could keep up quite easily. The ground was dry, and as Indian and horse raced along, a most satisfying cloud of dust rose behind them so that Omri could easily imagine that they were galloping across some wild, unspoken, or excuse me, unbroken territory. More and more, he found he was able to see things from the Indian's point of view. The little stones on the path became huge boulders that had to be dodged. Weeds became trees, the lawn's edge and escarpment. I'm not sure what that word was. <laughs> escarpment, I think that's what it is. E-S-C-A-R-P-M-E-N-T. That's a new word for me. Escarpment twice the height of a man. As for living things, an ant scuttling across the horse's path made him shy wildly. The shadow of passing bird falling on him brought him to a dead stop, crouching and covering as a full-sized horse might if some huge bird of prey swooped him. Once again, Omri marveled at the courage of Little Bear, faced with all these terrors. Here's a little picture of Little Bear and the horse outside. But it was not the courage of recklessness. Little Bear clearly recognized his peril. And when he had his gallop, turned the horse's head and came trotting back to Omri, who crouched down to hear what he said. This was much more difficult in the open air somehow. Danger, said the Indian. Much. I need bow, arrows, club, maybe gun. He asked pleadingly. Omri shook his head. Then Indian weapons? Yes, Omri, said Omri. You need those. I'll find them today. In the meantime, we better go back in the house. No, go. Shut in place. Stay here. You stay. Drive off wild animals. I can't. I've got to go to school. What school? A place where you learn. Ah, learn good. Said Little Bear approvingly. Learn law of tribe. Honor for ancestors. Ways of spirits. Well, something like that. Little Bear was clearly reluctant to return to the house, but he had the sense to realize he couldn't cope outside by himself. He galloped back along the path with Omri running alongside and dismounting, re-entered the carton. Omri was just carrying it up the back steps when the back door suddenly opened and there was his father. Omri! What on earth are you doing out here in your pajamas? And nothing on your feet. 
You naughty boy, what are you up to? Omri clutched the box to him so hard in his fright that he felt the sides bend and quickly relaxed his hold. He felt himself break into a sweat. Nothing? I couldn't sleep. I wanted to go out. What's wrong with putting on your slippers at least? Sorry, I forgot. Well, hurry up and get dressed now. Omri rushed upstairs and panting, <gasps> laid the box on the floor. He opened the flap. The horse rushed out alone and stood under the table, whining and trembling. He had a rough ride. Full of foreboding, Omri bent down and peered into the box. Little Bear was sitting in a corner of it, hugging his legs, which Omri saw to his horror was bleeding right through his buckskin leggings. Box jump, horse get fear, kick little bear, said the Indian, who though calm was clearly in pain. Oh, I'm sorry, cried Omri. Can you come out? I'll see what I can do. Little bear stood up and walked out of the box. He did not let himself limp. Take off your leggings. Let me see the cut, said Omri. The Indian obeyed him and stood in his breech cloth. On his tiny leg was a wound from the horse's hoof, streaming blood into the carpet. Omri didn't know what to do, but Little Bear did. Water, he ordered. Cloths. Omri, through the panic, forced himself to think clearly. He had water in a glass by his bed, but that would not be clean enough to wash a wound. His mother had some Listerine in her medicine cupboard. When any of the boys had a cut, she would add a few drops of some water, and that was a di or add a few drops to some water, and that was a disinfectant. A disinfectant to something that were clean. Omri dashed to the bathroom and with trembling hands did what he had seen his mother do. He took a small piece of cotton wool, what could be used as a bandage he had no idea at all. But he hurried back with the water and poured some into the action man's mess tin. Mess tin. The Indian tore off a miniature or a minute wisp of cotton wool and dipped it in the liquid and applied it to his leg. The Indian's eyes opened wide. Though he did not wince. This not water. This fire. It's better than water. Now tie. Or now tie, said the Indian next. Hold in blood. Omri looked around desperately. A bandage small enough for a wound like that. Suddenly his eyes lighted on the biscuit tin. There, lying on top, was a first World War, Sir, World War soldier with the red armband of a medical orderly in his hand as a doctor's bag with a red cross on it. What might that not contain if Omri could make it real? Not stopping to think too far ahead, he snatched the figure up and thrust it into the cupboard shutting the door and turning the key. A moment later, a thin English voice from inside called, Here! Where am I? Come back, you blokes! Don't leave a chap alone in the dark! And that's the end of chapter four. I guess you'll have to stay tuned for tomorrow to hear the rest of the story of what happened with the little... English soldier. I look forward to reading it with you. So have a good evening and I'll see you tomorrow.